Hello everyone and welcome to episode 112 of the 10 minute mauling challenge. Don't skip, I've got a lot of useful information. First of all, last week I went to a sim racing place with my son, which was absolutely fantastic. And we're going to go back there tomorrow, which is Friday. I'm super excited. I'm going to play Assetto Corsa. I used to do some sim racing back in my younger days. Well, that was still like 35 or something, but still my younger days. And that was a lot of fun and I'm, I'm like reviving those uh, little experiences now. And it's fun because my son is starting to race as well. So I thought with the theme this week being cockpit. Thanks Arvid for the weekly modeling challenge. Check out the Discord. I'm speaking reverse again as usual, like chopping stuff up like memento and going back and forth. But anyway, the weekly challenge in the Discord. Go check it out and we can model stuff every week. There's a new challenge going on and uh, I'm actually in a modeling mood now because I've been going crazy modeling assets. First of all, I got my low poly characters and uh, if you caught the live stream the other day, I did uh, another 11 characters, bringing the total characters up to 135 of the Crispoli characters mini and that's of course available on my uh, webpage if you want to grab that one 20 bucks or you can actually become a patron on the hero tier and download it for free but it's not really for free because you're supporting me <laughs> with patreon so i guess it's a bit of a give and take there but again uh, thanks for your support if you're supporting me through patreon big thumbs up and thank you so much you're making it possible for me so really happy about that so uh, speaking about modeling assets so i've been doing a lot of stuff so to go with the characters i need a lot of uh, different like environments and the interior and furniture and stuff like that and i got cracking with some furniture and i went a little bit overboard in fact I went a little bit super crazy, so I started to model all sorts of stuff, and for some reason, to my wife's big surprise, I started modeling kitchen appliances and stuff like that, and I hate to being in the kitchen most of the time, unless I absolutely have to. Today, for example, I fried meatballs for about an hour and a half, Swedish meatballs, of course, here in Australia, and uh, sorry if I'm speaking a little bit too fast, I don't know what's happened, I just like, I haven't even drank that much coffee, <laughs> but I'll just keep, keep going while I'm at it, so uh, don't skip forward, it's important information here. So I started modeling all sorts of weird assets, uh, tables, uh, dining tables, carpets or rugs, I guess you call them, appliances, fridges, freezers, uh, cookers, uh, gas cookers, uh, microwaves, uh, dishwashers, uh, washing machines. I guess you have to be in the UK to figure out that you have to put your washing machine apparently in your kitchen. Uh, I don't know why, it, like you should have a separate washing room, shouldn't you? That's what I've always, uh, but I, it doesn't fit in the kitchen. It feels weird to have a washing machine in the kitchen, especially a washing machine and a dryer. And then I also modeled kettles and some different stuff, toasters of different colors. And one of the beauty things, of course, when I model my stuff, I can just copy it and make, uh, since I'm using the palette way to colorize stuff, I just make a lot of assets and I change the UVs on them. And then I just name them with the suffix of, for example, red, blue, green, gold, or dark metal or bright metal. I'm really enjoying the metal feature as well of the new palette. I'm really having a good time with that. Maybe I'm going a little bit overboard, but I do a lot of the metallic stuff for, for example, the appliances and the kettles and things like that looks pretty cool i think in metal don't you think also here's a tip for you this is why i told you to watch because because this is useful information here packed into one video so if you find yourself struggling with motivation because i've seen that in the comments every now and then then you should actually try to set yourself aside blocks where you you eliminate all the distractions so i found that a two hour block is really good so i said to myself okay i'm gonna do two hours now i cannot uh, go to a website i can't do anything else but what I did allow myself to do is to put on like a podcast or some music stuff in the background and then i just got cracking i thought okay what's what sort of stuff do you find in a kitchen and to save time i don't really go by references i just sort of uh, wing it and come up with okay this is pretty good shape and i like to stick to a similar theme of everything uh, if i get really stuck maybe i'll google some uh, image search just for it when i went to couches for example i, I think i did a quick search uh, coffee tables uh, i think i just winged those as well actually most of them so i found myself setting two hour block Eliminate the distractions and just get started. Just get started and model asset after asset after asset. And I think this proved to be really successful for me. I don't know how many assets I've done so far, but I have a pretty decent collection after four or five of those sessions now. And I find that my, my pace is increasing a little bit as well. Another thing I'm doing is I'm modeling everything like straight and by the book. <laughs> I don't have to be straight by the book. I don't know. But everything's like straight and nice angles and stuff like that. But then I'm also copying the asset and making a wonkified version of it. So basically it's just like stylizing it by warping a lot of the stuff. I'll, I'll scale maybe the corners a little bit. I'll make one side a little bit taller than the other. And maybe I did go a little bit overboard on the fridge freezers. It looked like they're absolutely wrecked. But I was thinking uh, it could look cool in some environments to just not have everything perfect. Uh, but again, maybe I'm overdoing it a little bit, but hey, yeah, it looks a little bit quirky, so I'm happy with it. 
So I do duplicates of all the stuff and one of the things I found difficult is naming scheme. And funny enough, modeling is simple compared to naming schemes. So I've, I've been struggling a little bit and I come up with something with a prefix because everything I do now pretty much goes by the crisply name. So crisp polygons, crisply. Ooh, catchy, huh? Doesn't give you a lot of Google hits and I thought that's going to be something that you can search for. You'll probably find my stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a C in front of everything just to make sure that you know that it's part of that asset. And then I find, so CCM, <laughs> Crisply Characters Mini would be the prefix for all the characters. And then I have CF for Crisply Furniture. And then I have CA for Crisply uh, Appliances, for example. And it's no rocket science to it. There's no science at all. But I think uh, I like to prefix it like that. And then I follow up with what it actually is. So table for example if it's a table i'll do uh, cf dash table and then also if it's a coffee table i'll do dash coffee and then i'll just keep a number a digit at the end of it because initially i started to model everything and named it like uh, quirky coffee table oblong or circular and things like that and i got it was difficult to get a consistent uh, consistent naming scheme so i've decided to just go with the type of asset uh, if it's a, a particular model of it and then i'll just keep increasing the number and then i'll suffix it again with uh, just a color since i do with the palette coloring techniques i like to just make multiple color versions of it so when you use them in a game for example or in a video it'll be a lot easier to just pull out the green one or you don't have to go into an, an editing software and just re change the rechange <laughs> just called changed the uvs so i think uh, i'll just uh, yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, so we'll see how it goes it, also what i've been doing this week is uh, i've created some python uh, scripts in blender and i turned that into an extension so you can download that if you check out the link in the description it's called crisply crisply tools and if you install that one into blender still in beta it could be a little bit buggy everything i do <laughs> a little bit buggy but uh if you look here i've got a few things and I'll just quickly mention what it is. And if you know now, uh, if you model stuff for Unreal Engine, it doesn't like infinitely small textures. And when I colorize my objects, usually just for speed, since I've got the texture set up on the left here, I'll do scale zero on the left here. Uh, and then I can just position this on a color. But the problem with this is, uh, again, you've probably seen this if you followed my channel in the past couple of episodes. But when you zoom in, you see it's just like an infinitely small dot here. And the problem with this is that Unreal Engine doesn't like that when you import it. Ex import it. Unity is perfectly fine with it, but not Unreal Engine. Like one way to do it would be, for example, if you scaled it to 0 0.001, then you could do it, but then it, there's a lot of typing every time you need to do that. Plus, if you accidentally scale it to zero once, it's, you can't scale it back up again because it's infinitely small, so it doesn't like it. So what I've done now, and I've updated this recently, so even if you download it in the past, you should probably re-download it. Because if you mark a bunch of objects now, uh, you can select as many as you want, and you just cl click on Expand UV here. And hopefully you shouldn't see much of a difference. But if we go into this face now again, you can see that it's actually taken that polygon and created a circle of it there. And it might be a little bit difficult to see because it's still small. But if I scale it up a little bit, you can see that it's just created a circle. The distortion does not matter because all we want to do is grab the color and we want to make sure that the UVs are not infinitely small. So it'll do that. And just a, a caution here, because if we have this one and it happened to be like, let's scale it down to infinitely small. Let's put this little UV down here right on the intersection between different colors. Then I run the script here. Uh, actually, let's just bring it so it's actually the correct color before I run the script. But now when I run it, bow, expand UVs, you see it warps a little bit. Could be actually a little bit cool because you got some textures there that I didn't even think about. <laughs> so you might, maybe you want to keep it, but just be aware that you could be getting some artifacts of the coloring here. So you might want to move it to make sure that you're somewhere in the center here so you don't break that. So that's one of the cool features with this uh, uh, add-on. And if you want the circles to be bigger, you could like increase this one maybe to 10, for example. Uh, and then you UV unpack it again, and then you can see now now it's created bigger bigger ones. So, but I'll undo that. The second thing I've added uh, this is very recently. I did this the other day. You can actually light pack the UVs. So for characters, it's not really a problem because with the characters you don't really UV uh, light map them anyway. You don't. You always use dynamic lighting for moving skeleton or animated characters. But for furniture and everything, all these things now, they probably should have a light map channel. And since we're using this method to UV unwrap it, it's no good. So by default, it'll try to create a light map, which is extremely bad resolution in here. And it just destroys, it, it doesn't work as intended. It's not so much of a problem for me usually, because nearly everything I do is always real-time lighting, uh, both in Unity and Unreal Engine. I just do real-time shadows, real-time lighting. 
and uh, Lumen in uh, Unreal Engine, super cool. <laughs> so usually I don't have to mess around too much with it. But for the sake of making sure that all my assets now should be compatible with light mapping, I've actually created uh, this little extra feature here. And if I go to this couch here, we can see on light maps down here that it doesn't have a light map. Uh, it's just got one UV map, which is got the color here. And so I've actually not done it on this one. So if I select multiple objects like this and I click light pack UV2 there, you can see that it silently just added a light map channel here. And if I zoom out on the texture here and let's tab into the edit mode here and then switch to this light map, you can actually see that it's automatically done the a really good UV light map packing layout here. What it does behind the scene is it loops through all the objects that you've selected and it basically goes into tab uh, and then it goes to UV and it does a light map pack here. And it, if there's no UV2 channel, it'll create that one first, switch to that one, do the UV light map unpacking, and then switch back to the UVs that you want to be working with. So that's, this is saving me a lot of time. So for example, if I want to do a light map for all of these couches, mark them all, and then I just click on light pack UV2, and all of these now will have a light map pack that's correctly done. So I can just, uh, it, I can do this as many times as well because it'll just overwrite whatever is on UV channel two. So I don't think I've created a light map for most of these things. Nope, all of this. So I can just make sure that I'll expand the UVs. Oh, I should actually make sure that it's just on one there. So expand the UVs and then we'll do the light pack there as well. So all done. And these, I don't think I've done that, that one either, have I? Yeah, these I've actually got it, so I'm okay there. And finally, I should mention one more thing that I've done for ease. Uh, this one is probably the one that needs the most improvement still, and that's distribute XY. So for example, if I have, uh, I'll actually just duplicate these because I want to keep my order, but let's say I have uh, these assets here. Shift to duplicate them there, and then I jumble these up like this. Don't know, mess them up. So if I modeled horribly in weird orders like this. Now I can mark these and just distribute XY there and they'll disappear because it moves it to Origo there. And actually I want to space them maybe one unit width apart, distribute, okay, two unit, unit widths apart. So it just helps me organize a little bit like this. Could do with some more improvements by like dynamically spacing. I did get started with that, but didn't really get happy with it. So I just have it to help me a little bit along the way. And finally, actually I do have one more thing and that's uh, a little rename uh, helper here. Because when I duplicate to wonkify all of these, for example, let's say I have uh, all of these, or let's take all of these again. And I shift D to duplicate these. And if I shift D to duplicate, you can see that the name is usually added with a suffix like this, cyan002, uh, 002. And what this script does, it can actually help you uh, just search for something like .002 in the software object and rename it with uh, whatever you want, uh, XYZ. Usually I just use it to remove it. And if I F2 on this one, you can see that it's done that. And it can bulk do it for multiple objects. So it just helps me to organize that. Those are the little extra tools. Check the description if you want this little add-on crisply tool. So I'll keep uh, updating it every now and then. But if you're gonna mass model assets uh, and uh, prepare them, especially for Unreal Engine, this could be a little helpful tool for you. All right, so now I'm gonna go do the modeling. And since I'm gonna go sim racing tomorrow, and since the weekly modeling theme is cockpit, I'm gonna do a sim racing cockpit. I thought that'd be funny. So I'm gonna set my clock here, 10 minutes, because it is the 10 minute modeling challenge, episode 112. So I'm gonna set my clock, 10 minutes on the clock, and I'm gonna create a sim racing cockpit here. All right, here we go. Ready, steady, go, and we're off. Okay, so I'm gonna model it in this scene. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, gonna borrow this, shift D to duplicate it, and then I'll just move it to here. And then I'll create like a base plate, because I saw that they had this under the sim racing rigs. And uh, let's just make it about that size. E to extrude it, maybe not that big. L to select the link. G, uh, let's make this metal, because we've got this nice metal in the middle here. That's a bit semi-dull, semi-shiny. And here I'm gonna create uh, the cockpit on top. So scale, I'll move this up. It's gonna be in the air, uh, scale, why? I don't know if I get the proportions correct now, but never mind. I'll try E to extrude and we'll put a racing chair here. So shift E to duplicate that, scale, scale on the X axis, move it back and let's see, delete on the keyboard there so I can zoom in a little bit, get the rotation better. E to extrude, I'll just uh, shift E to duplicate that one again. I'll put the race seat here. How am I doing? For, I don't know if this, I have to compare the size to the furniture that's 60 centimeters. This is too small, so I'll make it scale y and scale x i can resize it later it's okay 
uh, e to extrude that one and uh, here I'll think I always struggle with the seats here a little bit but I'll do e to extrude I'll do like a little boxy seat here then we have to scoop it out because it needs to be a ray seat on so period and uh, let's go for medium point comma and do normal because then I can shift this one up on the normal length there maybe okay that was straight up anyway so it doesn't make any sense let's move it back first scoop it down and I can't do you know what I cannot remember what a ray seat looks like now terrible uh, I actually never knew what a ray seat looked like but never mind uh, I'm just gonna wing it a little bit like this so we can modify that later on L uh, red maybe makes it a little bit racy looking does it up here somewhere like a darkish middle toned red there and uh, how am I doing it's already eight okay I need to do some so you can see that it's I can't be getting stuck there I'll do the pro curved projector stuff here now so move that up to there and here maybe and scale x-axis and then here e to extrude and I should really everything's gonna be symmetrical here so I'll have to L to select the linked uh, L P by selection and then I'll select this whoop I do that sometimes just hotkey away everything <laughs> shift s curse selected and then now I'm gonna just uh, enable the auto mirror there we go okay that's the wrong axis cuz I'm modeling in the y-axis now auto mirror Okay, that's not working either and it's because I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere or something z-axis y-axis oh shift s cursor selected sh uh, right right click and set origin 3d cursor auto mirror there we go tab and now we've got it now we've got it going so I'm gonna do like a projector screen here because that's what uh, was why oh I'm editing on that side never mind that'll feel awkward for me never mind L to select the link and we'll grab a white color that was wasting precious time what a minute just got wasted by doing that let's grab the white here for the projector screen and I should have done a triple monitor setup for a home shouldn't I but never mind uh, let's just do R to rotate G to move E to extrude R to rotate G to move E to extrude R to rotate E to extrude R to rotate nice setup isn't it that's good and now I have to put uh, like a little shift D well I'm not putting a shift D there but just do something here and then I'll put a steering wheel here in a second and this seat needs to go a little bit closer maybe L I have a feeling that this uh, time is not gonna be enough this time G and there we go oh no I need that space I need the space so I'll need to put some pedals down here so maybe I'll just do Actually, I'll do Shift A, and I'll have to add another one here because Cube, Tab into Edit Mode, Scale you down to there. I have to just wing it a little bit now, and up to there, into there, and I Shift to like this one, Control P. Oh no, 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 Control L, Link Material, so I get the same material on this little new cube because it's a separate object without mirroring. A to select everything, Scale zero on the left side, and I'll just go back to like a gray now. I'll do metal later on. So I need to do the pedals here, so L select the link, scale X, well this should be metal, this should be metal. So I'll have to go down to metal here, so I'm finding myself having to panel a bit here. It's okay, and then I'll put three pedals on there, scale, scale and down, and I'll just do E to extrude, move it in, and E to extrude, move it in, and shift D to duplicate, scale, and E to extrude, I'm probably flipping the normals now because uh, I'm editing in a different one but never mind shift E to duplicate and shift R to duplicate that one again and I think that should be it for the pedals L to select the link move it in um, okay that's gonna have to do uh, put the steering wheel on here so I'm just gonna borrow this one shift D let's do a direct drive steering wheel super powerful super cool love to drive with them cost an absolute fortune so I'm not gonna buy one E to extrude Put it there and shift D to just duplicate, scale on the Y axis, E to extrude and then put a steering wheel on. I'll do my normal cheat method, shift D, scale, right click, subdivide and I'll go up to 2 and then I'll do the circle add on, X and then I'll take away the limited dissolve there. Well, tricky, I've got to do <laughs> wheels for some reason. And then I'll do Alt Z so I can see through and then we'll shift select that one I to inset right click and do bridge faces that gets us the hole there and then I'll just do this one and that one and we'll bridge them to bridge faces and the steering wheel's got a bit of a slant now 
rotate X. I didn't really plan on that, but it's okay. So I think that's going to be... Actually, do you know what? I'm going to put some buttons on since I can. L, scale, Z, and here we go. Shift D to duplicate, scale, Y, move it in, and E. Let's make this one light up because I've got this glow thing on the palette. And check out the description. Link to the palette there. You can get it for free. It's uh, CC0. So let's do a green button there, shall we? And shifty so it's public domain this palette texture if you want to grab it the red one there and uh, that should do and we can't have a chrome wheel here so alt select the linked no i'll do alt select with shift control b to bevel should have done the interior here as well shouldn't i control b bevel and L to select the linked, and we'll just grab like a matte color on this one. I don't know what color I should do. Is it the Ferrari wheel? I don't know. There we go. And I think I'm gonna slant this one, Control B, and then we'll put a little E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude for some details. Two minutes 39. Okay, I need to put those uh, like piston things here. I'm running out of time. Shift D, so I'm gonna have to do borrow some polygons here again to save time. Right click, subdivide. We'll do circle, scale it down, and G to move it. Move it down to here, all the way to the floor. I think I'm gonna space these, space these out a little bit, and I'll just mirror this. Why didn't I do it on the mirror? E to extrude. Okay, I can fix that. Shift, I'll select this one. Uh, y, no, 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 L selecting. P to separate selection. This one, shift click this one, control J to join them, and we've got the mirror back. So now I should be able to do like these hydraulics here. So I'll do uh, X and do limited dissolve to get rid of that little cross. Move it down, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude. Okay, I should tilt this now, so I'll do... Okay, I've got a lot of <laughs> junk here. So uh, I'll have to do rotate on the X axis, press X there. And then I'll do P comma and do, we'll do, no, 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 oh yeah, normal. How am I doing? One minute 39, okay. E to extrude, S to scale, and E to extrude. I'll just have to do something like that. E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude. And I have no idea how the hydraulics actually work, but let's put metal on, like a shiny metal there. Bright white shiny metal. And I have to do something here to put like a foundation on it. And I've got the, on here, where is it? There, I need to disable clipping so I can move this one in a bit. Okay, disable clipping, I said. Disable clipping. Is it because it merged or? It's not working. Disable clipping. Come on. Oh, I've got double, double mirrors on. That's why. Clipping off. Troubleshooting on the fly here. Scale down. Scale on the Y axis. Move it here. Bring it down to the ground level. E to extrude. And it's going to look a bit weird here because it's not got the proper stuff. But never mind. I've got 30 seconds, so I have to just wing this. Oh. Shift D to duplicate it. Bring it to there. Maybe bring this one out. The layout is not correct now. This is not how it works for real. But I'll just do E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude. I have no idea. E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, and Shift D, scale, and E to extrude. <laughs> I'm just putting some geometry here now because I know time is running out. And I should have done, just done it this fast before. Shift D. E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. Up! Ah! <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is what I got after 10 minutes. And uh, now I'll just finish this off. <laughs> because it didn't really finish the simulator. It's a uh, 6 degree of freedom, but see here in the front, let's pretend I actually had time to like shift D to duplicate that one. Move it in, E to extrude. And shift D to duplicate it, E to extrude, and why did not I not do this in the time frame? It would have been so much cooler. I would have had some credibility then. Uh, here, let's put the projector up here as well. Let's just pretend the time is moving super slowly. Shift D to duplicate, and we'll disable clipping again here. And then re-enable, I always forget. Well, apparently not this time. Scale, Y, X axis. Scale it down, and here we'll put 
in there. E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. I'm gonna put like a projector thing here, E to extrude, and E to extrude, or no, I'll actually shift E to duplicate for some reason. Sometimes I do that, E to extrude, so I can do L to select the link. E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Not excellent, but it's pretty good. I'll just move them up and E to extrude, clamp these down on the back here. Uh, e to extrude, maybe something like that. Pretend, control B for bevel and control R, control R, and then we'll do some metal here as well. Control B to bevel this, a little nice feature. And Alt select on that, and then maybe just do a different shiny metal there as well. Not that this would not be hydraulics, but I'll just felt like doing that. And for the ones that we played uh, the other day at BR Motorsports in Brisbane, super cool place, I recommend it. If you're around there, just check it out. Absolutely insanely fun to try it. So I'm gonna do E to extrude, and we'll just like do some fake projectors here. So just for the look. L select linked, scale on the Y axis, down to there. And then I'll just put shift D, right click on it, subdivide, circle, scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. Bet you didn't know that now, E to extrude, or I to inset. Hmm. And we'll do like a lens here, so there we go dark and uh, I'll bevel these edges a little bit. Control B to bevel the projector edges. We should really have E to extrude, S to scale, I to inset, E to extrude, maybe a dark color there. And I think I'm gonna shift this to like a white projector. That's what I think they had. I'm inspired. G and a little bit dark patch there. So I think that could do, I'm gonna hide this one a little bit more as well. Shift D to duplicate. Actually, what I think I'll do is I'll just do I to inset, E to extrude, so it looks a bit different. Control plus, and then G to move the, this to a dark color. So it's like a fake ambient occlusion to hide it. And then where did I put this one there? Scale Z, I'll just put something here as well. So this makes no sense really, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> Scale X. It's just to have something different there. And maybe I'll do I to inset B for boundary there. Then you can actually get that one if you want. And G, move this up to some dark here as well. Maybe what I should have, I should have like a control box maybe here as well. So I'll do, oh, this, oh yeah, this one's just hanging there. So I should put some cables here now. And I think I'll just do this one because it's not got mirror on it. So I'm just going to borrow that face, scale, right click, subdivide, and then do circle again, scale it down, move it into here, out to here. And then I'm just going to E to extrude. And I think from this angle, I'm just going to control right click a little bit. To have some cables there. It's a thick cable, that one. I'll do a smaller one too then. Uh, shift D to duplicate. No, that's cheating. I'll do the same, I think. I'll do Alt Z to see through. A bit tricky to see here, but they're there. Shift D to duplicate. Scale them down, move them in. E to extrude, and then I'll just do Control right click to come down. Not too, too bothered about how it looks, to be honest just needs to be something like that. Put a little control box here. So we got there, shift D to, oh, that's the wrong one. Just borrow that, shift D to duplicate it. E to extrude. And I have so many inverted polygons now, you wouldn't even know. Should we check Z solid, see here, all of these. Shift N flips them though, so I think we're safe and might be a little bit easier to model in this view here. So I'll just do there, there, and then I'll just shift D to, have actually got uh, 
Yeah, back face calling. I'm surprised. I thought I'd have a lot more. So E to extrude and bring this one down to the floor roughly there. Control B to bevel it and then I'll put some lights on here as well. Scale. E to extrude. L to select the linked. Shift D to duplicate. L to select the linked. And Z go back to material preview and let's just switch this one to like a, a glowy red color now for danger. L select the linked. G. Oop. G X. <clears throat> L. G X. And the C could have done obviously been a little bit nicer. Control R. I think they usually have like some sort of a hole here, don't they? And this looks nothing like a race seat. I to inset. Never mind. Right click, bridge. That's a nice way to cut holes. Alt select, alt select, control B maybe to bevel. And I'll bevel the hair as well. Or E to extrude, S to scale on the X axis. Bring it in. And maybe I'll go. I can't remember, Do you know, I really can't remember what race seats look like. I know what an itchy nose feels like though. And maybe I'll just do L to select the linked L. And then I, I noticed that they rotated the projectors there though. So they shoot like, and then maybe you need to angle them correctly. Actually, I'll do that first. Rotate on the Y axis, bring it down. That would roughly be in the right place. Rotate on the Z axis. And that's it. All right, I'm not going to overcomplicate this thing. This steering wheel is way too far away and too small or something. Need to have a bigger wheel, I guess. I should size check it, but I didn't. LL scale. Well, period, medium point. Why did it not scale? Comma. Scale. Oh yeah, the buttons. I need the buttons. L, L. Scale. Just bring it to there. Well, they. I guess you can adjust the seat, right? All right, so that's the race sim set up. Uh, it could do with a lot more. It could have like a computer and stuff and more cables and whatever. But I think I am, I'm happy with that. So. <laughs> Just made it within the 10 minutes as well. Isn't that incredible? Just, uh, you might have think I went slightly over, but I think you're wrong. I just made it. Just made it. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was fun to model a little sim racing seat, low poly stuff to go. And this is, I'll put this in the asset pack as well. Uh, once it's released, should be a lot of fun. And uh, join the Discord, link in the description as well. Come and hang out with us in the, especially in the general English channel. That's where all the action is happening, apparently. <laughs> so uh, hang, o hang over there. <laughs> so give it a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in a video soon again. Bye for now. Infancia out. That's the first. <laughs>